Hi everyone, Joe Garth here, creator of Brushify.io. In this video, we're going to talk about Nanite. Nanite is Unreal Engine's virtualized geometry system. It was created to allow us to render high polygon objects at real-time frame rates. Brushify is fully Nanite compatible. This means that the Brushify landscape auto material, as well as all Brushify static meshes, can be used with Nanite. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can enable Nanite in your projects. This is Brushify Bootcamp. Let's get started. In this section, I'm going to show you how you can enable Nanite displacement on any Brushify landscape. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a landscape actor and select that. And you want to make sure you have the Brushify landscape auto material assigned. The next step is I'm going to actually paint down a little paint layer. So I'm going to go to the selection mode, landscape, and I'm going to go to the paint tab. And I'm going to scroll all the way down uh, to where I see the mud paint layer. And I've already assigned a layer info to that. So let's just paint down a little bit of mud. All right, so now I have this sort of mud painted down. So you'll see the problem with this mud is it's just completely flat right now. So what Nanite Tessellation is going to do is it's going to help us achieve some actual bump or displacement. Now, in order to do that, there are a few steps that we need to complete. The very first step is going to be enabling Nanite Tessellation. And in order to do that, you actually need to go into your projects folder. So this is my project folder in Explorer. And as you can see, uh, I've got my project file, my U project, and I've got my content folder, but I'm going to look for a folder called config. So you want to look inside that folder config, double click it, and you should find a few different sort of INI configuration files. You want to go to your default engine INI, right click and edit that in notepad. Next, you want to find an area that says render settings. And you want to copy and paste these two console variables into your INI file. I'll leave these down in the description below so you can easily copy and paste them. Once those have been added, you can restart your project and load up your editor. So you still won't have any displacement on the landscape. And the reason for that is the actual displacement is actually disabled by default for performance reasons. So to enable it, we're going to go up to Window, Content Browser, and we're going to go into our Content Brushify Materials folder. And inside there, you'll find a folder called Landscape, and you'll find a material file called M underscore Landscape. I'm just going to double click on that. Now, this is actually Brushify's Landscape Auto Material. And it's quite complicated, and there are a lot of different moving parts. But for now, we're just going to focus on an area right here that says uh, tessellation. So if you find this little thing here that says tessellation, and you'll see this little thing here that says material height output. Now this node is incredibly important because this is actually how the sort of height information gets fed into our material. And by default, all this is disabled. This node here is actually for the old tessellation system, which was deprecated. So you can just drag that out of the way because we don't need it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this little node here and we're going to hook that up to the bottom here where it says displacement. And that's pretty much it. So once we've done that, that's all of the work that we need to do in the node graph. The next step is we're going to go to this little node here called M underscore landscape. And once we're there, click on the details panel. Just go down to the details panel here on the left. And we're going to find the section that says Nanite. So here you can see there are a few different parameters here. And by default, this magnitude parameter will actually be something like 4. Now that's way too high, so we're going to turn that to 0.1. And once you've made those two modifications, simply hit Save. Now you'll notice that the tessellation is actually still not showing up. And that's because we haven't actually enabled Nanite on our actual landscape. But doing that is really, really simple. Just click on your landscape actor, go on the details panel and scroll down to where it says Nanite. And here we're going to want to tick enable Nanite and then click build data. Now this will take a little bit of time as it's got to build a Nanite landscape mesh. 
and that takes a little bit of time to prepare. Now that that's completed, we can go down to our material and you'll see that there is actual displacement happening on the material there. And this is real geometry, not a shader effect or anything like that. This is actual nanite geometry. Uh, another thing we can do, we can actually visualize nanite by going to the lit button here and changing the view mode to nanite visualization and then overview. And this will actually let us see an overview of the nanite visualization. So you can see the sort of triangles, clusters, how this is sort of working under the hood. And if we zoom in really, really closely, you can see all of the detail that's being provided by Nanite here. One other thing you'll notice is if I just tweak the sunlight here, uh, you can see there are actually shadows that are generated uh, from the Nanite displacement. The amount of detail that you can get out of this technique is really amazing. Uh, I wanted to create some quick little beauty renders using the cinematic camera uh, just to show you how great the amount of detail really is. Enabling Nanite for static meshes is incredibly simple. Simply go to your static mesh in your level or in the content browser. I'm just going to click the little magnifying glass to browse it in the content browser and then just double click on the static mesh. In the static mesh editor, you'll find a tick box that says enable Nanite support. Tick that box, leave everything at its defaults and click apply changes. Once that's finished, you can click on save and we can now take a look at our Nanite mesh in the level. I'm gonna to go to the Nanite visualization again, go to overview, and you can now see that that asset is using Nanite. In this section, I'm gonna show you how you can enable Nanite for any Brushify foliage. First though, we're gonna change one of the Brushify shaders, which is the Brushify wind shader. This is necessary because the Brushify wind shader needs to be properly set up for Nanite. We're gonna to go to Content, Brushify, Materials, Wind, and we're gonna open up MF underscore Trunk Sway. Inside of this shader, I'm just gonna zoom out a little, we're gonna find the section that says Object Pivot Point. And we're gonna to go to the Transform Position node. We're going to make sure that the local space setting in the details panel is set to instance and particle space. In future versions of Brushify, it may already be the case that this is already set to instance and particle space. This setting is really important because it means the wind bending will work with Nanite. Once you've made that change, hit save. It might take a little bit of time for the shaders to recompile. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to find the mesh for this maple tree here. And you can find this if you have the Brushify forest pack in Brushify, Meshes, Foliage, Trees, Maple. And we're going to go on the S underscore maple large static mesh file and just double click. This will open the static mesh editor. In the static mesh editor, you'll find the details panel and you'll find a section called Nanite settings. The setting we want to change is right here. It says enable Nanite support. And we're just going to tick that box. Now we can leave all the rest of these at their default settings and we can just click apply changes. Um, hit save and we can close the static mesh editor down. And now we have a Nanite enabled tree. I'm just going to go up to the Nanite visualization mode and go to the overview. And as you can see, this tree is now using Nanite. I really hope you found this tutorial useful. If you like tutorials like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions about Brushify, you can use our support email, support at brushify.io. Thanks for watching. This is Joe Garth, signing out. Cheers, guys.